Welcome, my friends, to Asus's. Why do you have a face? What, what is this? Why do you have a photo of me? Why did I not shave in this photo? I mean, is it life size? It's somehow bigger. I don't always expect to be trolled. Wait, why is my mouth? <laughs> Hello, welcome to today's video. Boy, oh boy, I love Asus. It actually works. Yeah. <laughs> video like that. Did you just invite me here to make fun of me? What is this for? So this is going to help you uh, give those guys some kind of idea of what our spatial vision 3D OLED display does to your eyes, what it looks like. Spatial vision 3D OLED. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can shoot it through your mouth. Again, I would like to thank our friends at ASUS for sponsoring this video and approving what's going on right now. So this is specifically the ProArt StudioBook 16 3D OLED. And the idea here is that not only is it a very high-end device, but it actually has a full, oh, oh, it's doing it. Oh, it's already doing it. Oh, okay. So this is gonna deliver glasses-free 3D, which normally has been one of those things where it's like, oh, it's kind of all right or whatever. But that, so okay, what's going on right now is that there are a couple of cameras which are tracking my eyes to essentially keep the panel oriented correctly. If I use this, it'll lock onto this, right? Okay. So now the laptop is tracking fake Austin and delivering, what, what, what do you want to call it, uh, uh, cardboard Austin. You've got a 120 hertz OLED panel here, right? That makes sense to me. And you've got the eye tracking to determine exactly where I'm at. But how are you actually doing this in the actual display? Like how is it actually like, because as I move left and right, I can see it's tracking it. Like everything looks like it's still staying very, very like stable in 3D space. Right, so there's a lenticular lens system lenticular. into the screen. So um, basically there's millions of tiny lenses built into the panel that split the image into left eye and right eye. So gotcha. part of the screen is going to your left eye and part of it is going to your right eye. And as you move, the angle or, or the image that it's showing on the left side and right. the right eye changes based on where you are at. Oh, okay. Are we actually speeding? Okay. So anytime you're trying to shoot 3D on camera, it is very, very difficult, which is why Cardboard Austin exists. So I'm going to show what it's like to come through Austin. What the world looks like through your mouth. Oh, actually, that does a really good job. So you can see that the 3D is actually staying very stable. It's actually tracking up, down, left, right. Like those items look like there's like depth. Like I feel like I could reach like a couple of feet back into the display. So this is an option on the ProArt Studio Book as well as on the... VivoBook Pro 16X. Essentially this is meant almost as kind of like a, not a prototype, but this is like sort of like the first wave of like, truly good glasses-free 3D that's no downside. Because of the lens system, the brightness is slightly lower. Yeah. It's so small you can't really tell. This is, well, obviously not for everyone, and there's not everyone who's gonna be able to take advantage. Like, you can't just load up a game with like Valorant and immediately see it in 3D. Like, it does have to be an application which is specifically uh, able to take advantage of full 3D, right? Correct, so to be able to have it 3D, you need two render targets, left eye and right eye. Right. That means VR games always do have that, and oh, they work on this. So cool. any VR VR game that works with keyboard and mouse or yeah. with a gamepad yeah. works with this. That's cool. And of course, you can just turn this on and off. So right now we got in full 3D mode, but if we turned off the 3D function, you would never know it was there. It's just a super high quality 120 hertz OLED display. Correct. This is very cool. I think it's very cool. I know I did. I'm like making fun of myself with the it's voice. Like the annoying orange, but like <laughs> just you being more annoying. Look, it works. <laughs> <clears throat> You invite me here just to wound me, don't, don't you? you? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna interview everyone like this from now on. Ken, what do you think about this? This is the closest my boss has ever been to me. There's a wide range of new Asus Zen books, but one of the things that jumped out to me most, first of all, is that OLED is on almost every single device here, but also there's some really interesting stuff that they're doing on the internal. So this is specifically the ZenBook Pro 16X. Very high end, you can see, you've got a bunch of creator-focused stuff. What I actually wanna talk about is what's on the inside. So this is the motherboard of last year's model. You can see that you've got the graphics card here, or your GPU, and you've got your CPU and your RAM. So they've got a little measurement, which is basically 60 by 50 millimeters, right? Which is what you have, your RAM, you have everything. It's a small package, but look at this. So this is the Supernova SOM. And essentially what you've got here is your CPU and your RAM all on one package. Now that's really cool because essentially it really shrinks the actual area. It's similar to another 
type of device that you could also have your memory and CPU all <clears throat> together. Uh, we won't talk about that. But what it gives you is more room on the motherboard. So you can see right here we've got our GPU, and that gives more room for the VRM, for the memory. So it's not only just about cooling these things, but it's about having the physical space on the motherboard to take advantage of more power and more performance. And having that as one individual unit is really, really neat. Like it doesn't seem like something you would ever know on the outside, but having this stuff on the inside of your device can actually make a big difference. I'm fired up. I'm excited. I haven't slept in like 27 hours. Your Zen? No, I'm not Zen at all. <laughs> OLED is a big theme of a lot of the devices here, and none more so than the 14X. Not only does it have that 120 hertz 2.8K display, but it also has a really interesting coating. So I open it up a little bit here. You'll see that the back of it is actually ceramic coated, so it's a little bit of a different sort of feel. It's actually a much more eco-friendly finish, but it definitely gives it a sort of interesting vibe. I did, yeah, 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 a little bit of that. You could do a little bit of that. So a lot of fun goodies here, but one of the devices I've never been able to try is this. This is the Expert Book B9, specifically the new OLED model, the B9403. I'm not gonna touch it because this laptop, I've always known it for one very specific reason. It is one of the absolute lightest laptops in the world, made out of magnesium. And even though now it's got a slightly larger display and it's got a little bit more performance than an extra cooling fan, it still weighs less than one kilo. I've wanted to touch one of these for like three years, as long as you guys have been making them. I've never actually done it before. <laughs> it's like two fingers. Feel that. Oh my, whoa, whoa, okay. Dude, that is ridiculous. If you are making laptops that are thin and light and you say you can't put ports, this laptop weighs almost nothing. We've got a full-size HDMI, two Thunderbolts, we've got... Did you put mini HDMI on this? It is a mini HDMI plug. Okay. But it's actually for Ethernet. Oh, and there's also a USB-A. You've got all this on a laptop that's this thin and this light. Man, no one has an excuse. Be better. As I walk through the booth, to give you the best example of what ASUS has to offer, there's one device that has jumped out to me in a way I was not expecting. This is the Chromebook Vibe CX34 Flip. Now, I was immediately drawn to this because the color scheme, I think, is really cool. So this is a gaming Chromebook. We've talked about this before on the channel, but essentially what you've got is a 144 hertz panel, actually good specs, so not only do you have a touchscreen, I definitely touched it, hoping it was touching. <laughs> but you also have proper specs. You've got yourself Wi-Fi 6E, which is important for cloud gaming. The other thing that I actually like these devices for isn't necessarily just for gaming, right? Chromebooks and gaming, while you can obviously do cloud gaming on it, what I like about it is they also are just really good laptops. You've got solid specs, really good Wi-Fi, terrific screen, and I love this colorway. Like, the white, the orange accents, the 14-inch size, I wish we would have done my 30 days with this Chromebook instead of the other one I picked. I heard you like Wi-Fi. How about some Wi-Fi 7? Look, I'm intimidated being in the same room as this right now. I'm not gonna lie. Look, look at the size of this thing. Now it's got itself actually like proper specs in here. You can be running like VPNs on at the same time as you've got a ridiculous level of bandwidth. That router is more powerful than my PC. <laughs> Man, you need a new PC. <laughs> Hey, whoa, 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 Ken, Ken, hmm. what are you, pull the camera. You're still speeding? You're trying to move stuff out of the way. Did you realize what this is? This is a PCI Gen 5 SSD. You almost put this, you were getting this out of the way of the shot. I literally know nothing more than the fact that I've got this little piece of paper, but this is a PCI Gen 5 SSD. What's the speed on this? 13, 13 gigabytes per, 13 gigabytes per, 13 gigabytes? This might be one of the world's fastest SSDs and you were about to like get it out of the way because it was in the, in the middle of your shot. Yeah, like it was in the way of the cool Xbox. 13.5 gigabytes per second? Something I wasn't expecting is RG to bring out an Xbox controller. So they have both the Rykiri and the Rykiri Pro. And these sort of jump into a little bit more of the Pro controller space. So you can see this is the Pro. So I'm gonna fire it up. It not only has an OLED, you also have some very nice sticks. But on top of that, this is the wireless version. So there's also a wired version, which you can see is already plugged in and connected and you've got some actual RGB on it and whatnot. But what I will say about both of these is that they feel high quality in a way that a lot of third-party controllers generally don't. The build quality is there. And while the standard model, which is wired, is a little bit lightweight, in my opinion, but as soon as you go over to the wireless version, which will support Bluetooth 2.4 as well as USB-C. But you look at the way that you've got your trigger stops, you've also got 
some really nice programmable buttons on the back. I've actually never tried something that has them quite in this sort of orientation. I'm really excited to see because you don't see a lot of really high quality third party Xbox controllers. Generally you've got like the Elite controller and there's a couple of others, but usually you want to go with the Elite controller. And I actually kind of say, this might be worth considering over the Elite, especially because you've got that OLED. You got your profile, you got exactly how it's connected and everything. It's pretty Rogers, dude. Can you say Rogers one more time? I heard that you had a new G14. Is yes. this true? Yes, it is. Can I try it? Of course. Excellent. How does this sound? Okay. Up to an RTX 4090 Four, with 125 watt TGP. You're porting a 4090? Yes. And a 14 inch laptop? Yes. Is that a good idea? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Some of the things you'll find on the entire range of ROG 2023 laptops include the Nebula displays, which are gonna give you 500 nits of brightness, even down to the 13-inch displays. You're also getting advanced Optimus. Like, pretty much the entire lineup this year has been upgraded in one way or another. Why, hello, didn't see you there. I was just admiring this tiny little gaming PC. So, you know what they say about small things. They're always better, personal experience. This is the ROG G22CH. It is an incredibly tiny chassis. And yet they've got this thing loaded up. You can water cool this? Yeah, there's Where? a building. So yeah, you can have like a radiator oh, at the top. Oh, neat. The reason I bring this up is because this is currently running a demo of one of the most absurdly fast gaming monitors I've ever seen. So this is 144 hertz. You know, if you're an old school gamer, you got gray hair, you're playing at 144 hertz. No, no, no. All the cool kids are rocking 540 hertz. So this is the Swift Pro PG24 8GP. It is a 1080p, full HD, 540 hertz monitor. Sorry to say you're not gonna be able to see this on a YouTube video, but 144 hertz, very, very smooth. All right, what's up? Oh, Ken, you're so smart. So, you just, so Ken literally just took a photo of the displays. You can actually see the difference. The 144 is doing some ghosting, whereas the 500 essentially is not. And that's almost entirely down to the shutter speed of this camera, I bet. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've in the past been a little bit skeptical of being able to see that much more beyond like 120, 144. Um, I'm gonna stare at this for a second and I'm gonna tell you if I can tell it's not perfect. I mean, it's not even close. Like I, this is very smooth if I didn't know any better. This is like, perfect. I, my, there's no way my eyes can see more than 540. I'll be here in like three years and I'm like, a thousand hertz? That's a lot of hertz. It's gonna gigahertz. Oh God. Did get it, cause it's a thousand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm proud of that one. Oh no, megahertz. No, <laughs> megahertz, not gigahertz. I ruined my joke. Oh, that's just definitely kick me out. <laughs> 